Um, good morning, and thank you for being here. I'm Nancy Marr, and I'm the Voter Service Director for the League of Women Voters of Palos Verdes, and I'm also the Public Policy Chair for the Palos Verdes branch of AAUW. And these two organizations, AUW and League of Women Voters, are bringing this forum to you today. Um, I want to thank the volunteers who have helped us organize the uh, program to assist the voters. And I want to especially thank the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and Rancho Palos Verdes um, Cable Television for their uh, cooperation and assistance in presenting the forum. Both the, and this is being uh, video recorded and uh, will be shown on uh, local cable. Both the League of Women Voters and AUW are nonprofit organizations that are nonpartisan. We take stands on issues, but we never endorse or oppose candidates or political parties. The League works to promote good government, citizen education, and citizen participation. AUW works to improve the lives of women and girls. Civility in discussion of public issues is an important principle to both organizations. And we will ask for courtesy, please, in all comments and all responses tonight from both the speakers and the audience. I do we just want to note two other election activities that are coming up. One on Monday night, the 15th of October, um, the League will be presenting ballot measure, the League and AUW will be presenting a ballot measure uh, discussion of the pros and cons of the ballot measures at the Peninsula Center Library from seven to nine. And also um, another ballot measure presentation on Saturday the 20th from two to four in the afternoon at the San Pedro Library. And finally, there'll be a candidate for school board for, uh, a, excuse me, a forum for school board candidates um, at um, the Peninsula Center Library on October 23rd from seven to nine. Okay, uh, I'm now going to turn the meeting over to Mary Ellen Barnes, who is our moderator for the morning. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, welcome to our candidates forum for the California Assembly District 66. I wanted to go over the ground rules for the candidates and for the audience so you understand everything. We are taking written questions only. So if you wanna ask a question, um, there are some volunteers who have cards and uh, pencils. Yes, she, she's raising her hand. So all you have to do is um, kind of wave your hand around and, and you'll get a card. Um, we're gonna try to ask as many questions as possible. We still have to end at 11, even though we're starting late, uh, which I apologize for, uh, but so if we don't ask your question, it's because we ran out of time or because it's a duplicate of another question because we don't want to keep asking the same question over and over and over again. Um, all of the, both candidates who are participating today have agreed to abide by our rules, whether they like our rules or not. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna introduce them. They'll each have two minutes for their opening statements. They'll have two minutes for their closing statements, and they will have up to a minute and a half to answer questions. Uh, they don't have to use the whole, I mean, sometimes something's like, yeah, I'm for it, no, I'm against it. You know, I mean, you don't have to do that. I, we're addressing all of our questions to both candidates, so nothing is gonna be addressed to just one person. Uh, the other thing I wanted to stress is this is a forum where our candidates are ask, answering questions. This is not a debate where there's rebuttal and, and all of that. If we wanted to debate forum, we'd have to do another kind of forum. Uh, the other thing is please, candidates, answer the question that is asked, not the question before that you didn't think you finished answering. I don't want you doing that, and I will stop you, and I will stop you, so <laughs> don't think I won't. Um, we have two timekeepers in front, Julie and Anne, right in the front row, wave your little Julie has got the little paddles that say one minute left, 30 seconds left, stop. 
So, and, and Anne has the, the phone with, the, you'll hear the little timer go off. So if you could please wrap up quickly at that point, then we can get on and, and finish things. Also, um, I know there's a small audience today, so please, no booing, hissing, snickering, or applause or cheering for the candidates. We can wait till after and give them applause then, but otherwise it's kind of out of order and a little bit rude. So I, for, I would like to introduce our candidates and then when we'll start with our opening statements and we're doing things alphabetically today. So we will be starting with the assemblyman and then going to Mayor Scotto. And then when we close, Mayor Scotto and then our assemblyman, okay? So um, I wanna introduce our assemblyman, Al Muratsuchi and former Mayor of Torrance, Frank Scotto. These are our candidates for Assembly District 66. So let's start with opening remarks and we'll start with Al first, two minutes, okay? All right, good morning everyone. Thank you for coming out on this beautiful rainy day. And my name is Al Muratsuchi <laughs> and I have the privilege of serving as your South Bay Assembly member. I'm a former prosecutor, a former South Bay school board member, a husband, and a father of a fourth grader attending a local public school. My family and I live here because we love the South Bay, and I wanna keep fighting for the things that make the South Bay a special place to live and raise a family. Jobs, good schools, safe neighborhoods, a clean and healthy environment. For jobs, I've written laws that have helped companies like SpaceX and Northrop Grumman create thousands of local jobs. I also wrote a law that cut red tape for small businesses. That's why I'm endorsed by the California Small Business Association. For our schools, as a parent and as a former school board member, I'm fighting to increase state funding for our local schools. I also delivered more funding for our state universities to make college more affordable and to invest in our innovation economy. For public safety, as a former prosecutor, I'm fighting to keep our families and neighborhoods safe. Last year, I had a 100% public safety voting record, and that's why I was named the legislator of the year by the California Police Chiefs Association. For a healthy environment, I wrote new laws to make the Torrance refinery safer and to hold the operators accountable for polluting our air and water. This year, I wrote a bill to block the Trump administration uh, to, and their plan to expand offshore oil drilling in California. And that's why I'm endorsed by the Sierra Club. I'm also proud to be endorsed by the National Organization for Women and Planned Parenthood because of my strong record in fighting for women's rights and in supporting the Me Too movement. I'm South Bay Assembly Member Al Muratsuchi, and I would appreciate your support. Thank you, Frank. Well, first of all, thank you all for coming out in this weather. I know we don't get a lot of rain in California, so I know some of you probably were worried about driving here. But my name is Frank Scotto, obviously, and I'd be honored to represent you as a 66th Assembly District. I have lived in the South Bay for 60 years. My wife, of over 50 years, raised two children here, and they went to public schools. And we're very proud that our children both are very close to us here, and our five grandkids are, I'm taking away from grandchild time right now, by the way, to be here, so it uh, makes it difficult to, to do these on Saturdays mornings. But it's great that we have the opportunity to speak with you, give us, your, give us our, our opinions of things, and so here we go. I uh, was very fortunate to be in the Army during Vietnam. I did my time, I'm very proud of that. And that experience taught me many valuable lessons. It, respect for our country, a commitment to community, and respect for others. I owned and operated many different businesses for over 44 years. And over that time, I realized how difficult the environment in California is because of the laws and regulations that Sacramento constantly passes to hinder small businesses. Because of that, I am endorsed by the National Federation of, of Independent Businessmen. Uh, if I elected, I'll stand up to protect Prop 13. That's one of the few taxpayer protections that we have left. Prop 13 right now is under attack. And without that, many of you will not be able to afford the homes that you have today. California has to remain a place that's affordable for everyone. Violent crime in California has gone up significantly in the last few years. Our current legislation wants to pass laws constantly letting criminals out of jail. 
We need to hold people that are criminals accountable for their crimes. This is why the Torrance Police Officers Association has endorsed me. And I want to ask you for your support because I do have a lot of great ideas of how we can fix California in this terrible need. Thank you, Frank. You can actually kind of wrap up your thought, you know? All right, thank you. Uh, okay, we're gonna alternate uh, back and forth starting questions so everybody gets a chance to start. And So in this one, we're gonna start with Frank with our first question. How can the state reduce expenditures? This is one of the things that we have a serious problem with in California. Instead of doing that, we, they, constantly are coming to you for more money. That's an example with Prop 6. I think most of you don't realize that our gas tax today, only 30% of that goes into the repairs of our roads. 70% goes to other things. And so this is why we need to limit the amount of money that's given to politicians up there, because they have a, a blank check, and the check is yours. We have to teach them that enough is enough, and this is what I'm running on, by the way. Gas tax is one of those issues, but Proposition 13 is another one. If you give them unlimited money, and they'll spend unlimited money, but if you show them that this is a, the time that we need to stop, they will learn how to do these things. We waste a significant amount of money in California. An example of that is the, the train to nowhere. Today, it's estimated to be over $100 billion in expenses. And simply, we could have done an audit to fix that or stop it, but we didn't. Now, we've got to think about $100 billion, how many environmental things we can do with that money, how we can help the homeless with that money. $5 billion of that probably fix all of our homeless problems in the state of California. And these are the kinds of things we could be doing with that money rather than building a train that I don't think any of you will ever take. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Al, a minute and a half. So California has made remarkable progress in the last seven years. If you recall, just seven years ago, California was looking at uh, budget deficits of over $26 billion. I mean, people are talking about uh, California falling off the fiscal cliff, uh, that California was ungovernable. Today, seven years later, we have a rainy day fund, rainy day funds that uh, exceed over $13 billion. And so I am very proud of that record of fiscal responsibility, of that remarkable turnaround where we've uh, you know, spent on priorities like restoring funding for our schools and our, for our universities, uh, but at the same time, we've focused on building up our rainy day fund for uh, the you know, eventual downturn in our economy. But I, I wanna emphasize that uh, you know, state funding is critical for things like our local schools. I mean, Palos Verdes schools, as a parent, you know, I know that more state funding directly translates into smaller class sizes, you know, more uh, student counselors, more academic support services, more music and art programs for our kids. And so, you know, we shouldn't just be uh, looking about you know, starving government or, or trying to shrink government, but we need to recognize that government means good schools, you know, uh, strong public safety, uh, firefighters that are, are needed to fight the, the now new normal of the year-round wildfires. Those are critical services that the state relies upon. Thank you. Okay, Al, we'll start with you with this question. Homelessness has exploded over the past few years. Please tell us why and what you can do about it. We have a homelessness crisis. Uh, the population of the homeless has dramatically increased uh, in California in, in recent years, and that's all fundamentally tied to the increased cost of housing. I mean, the bottom line is that uh, uh, our wages are not keeping up with the cost of living, whether it's housing costs or whether it's rental costs. You know, the uh, wages are not keeping up with the, house, uh, with the cost of living. And so we're seeing more and more people. You know, I, I just took a tour of, uh, of the South Bay homelessness problem, uh, you know, specifically concentrated in the Harbor Gateway area, the Harbor City neighborhood. You know, there are people that are going from living in apartments to living in their cars, living in RVs. And you'll see those cars and those RVs parked, you know, on the, on the streets uh, uh, right here in the South Bay. And so I'm proud that I was able to... Uh, 
uh, support a package of bills that we passed last year, including a $4 billion homelessness uh, uh, a fund to, uh, to build more affordable housing uh, so that we can help uh, meet the demand for affordable housing, not only in the South Bay, but throughout the state of California. Uh, if you. I may, oh, I, since sure, I, you've also, got time. Um, I, I also want to emphasize that it's critically important in addressing the homeless problem that many people are homeless not just because they can't keep up with their rents, can't keep up with the housing costs, but also because they have mental health issues, they have substance abuse issues. And so I'm supporting these wraparound programs that, that provide more affordable housing, but at the same time provide substance abuse and mental health treatment. Thank you. Okay, Frank, same question. Thank you. This is one of those issues that the last five years has exploded in California. Our legislators in Sacramento want to ignore this. Go to Sacramento, it's the epicenter of homelessness. These people, they walk down the streets to go to restaurants and walk over homeless people. And all of a sudden today, they want to pretend like it's an issue. Well, you know what? It's been an issue for five years and it's, and it's gonna get much, much worse in California. Now all of us have got to realize that a very small percentage of those people that are homeless will be able to afford a home that we're gonna build for them. So building more homes and lowering the prices of your homes is not the answer to homelessness at all. It is all the other things that we're gonna be talking about, the wraparound things that he's just bringing up now. Well, we need to take some of the money that the state has in a surplus, seven to eight billion dollars, and take care of these people. These people need a litany list of things. They don't just need a handout, they need to be, uh, uh, have mental health treatment, they need to go to, we need to build hospitals for these people, something to go to and have, uh, get counseling. There's, it's a whole litany list of those things that are, are problems with homeless. It's not just the fact that we need to build more homes. It, that doesn't work that way, because if that's the case, believe it or not, there is homes that these people could go to, to to live in. So we need to get the steps necessary to move those people back into society. For the last 30 years I've been working with homeless people and I'm a part of the Sisters of Charity and the House of Yahweh and I've been working with those people and helping them get relocated. Thank you. Okay, Frank, we'll start with you on this question. What are your views on climate change and what do you propose to do about it locally? Well, first of all, climate change is real and you can sit there and pretend like it's not but even if it isn't real, 100 years from now, whatever we do today is a good thing. So that we need to go down that path and do everything we can to fix the environment. Well, having said that, being the mayor of the city of Torrance, I was the first mayor in the South Bay to do a number of things, and I'm not gonna have the time to tell you all those things, but we're the first city to do storm drains, to, to remediate the NPDES storm drain permits. First city to do the gray water programs that bring gray water to all of our public places. First city to do no smoking on the beaches. First city to, to do beach cleanup. It started in the Torrance, yes. Started at the environmental fair in Torrance. First city to do that. We, we did it so many things that so many other cities are trying to copy us that we are very proud that we have a department that does that. And yes, that started when I was mayor in the city of Torrance. But you know, uh, one of the things I am most proud of is that we started the green waste program in the city of Torrance. And by doing so, it re diverted almost 80% of our trash out of the city of Torrance. It started at 10, went to 20, went to 30, and now we're up to such a high number that literally the black trash cans get very little and so that people were able to get smaller black trash cans. And so we did everything in the city of Torrance necessary to make our environment better. And you know, there's a lot more that could be done and I believe that businesses have to get involved and participate. Thank you. Thank you. Al. So climate change is a global crisis. The United Nations just came out with a landmark study that found that uh, if we don't, if the world doesn't start taking serious and aggressive action, we're going to start seeing the, the impacts on our daily lives of climate change, you know, we're already seeing it in California, wildfires that are, that used to be just seasonal, now are year round, and they're raging all throughout the state of California. I mean, places like Palos Verdes are, uh, may become at risk of, of wildfires. We need to address uh, uh, climate change in a serious and aggressive way, and, 
you know, unfortunately, it's gonna take much more than hosting environmental fairs and uh, stopping smoking on beaches. I mean, I'm very proud that I supported SB 100, which commits California to uh, the goal of 100% clean and renewable energy by 2045. That was a landmark piece of legislation that I co-authored. I'm very, also very proud to have authored a bill that's blocking the Trump administration's plan to expand offshore oil drilling off of California's coast. This, you know, these and other efforts that California is leading the country in the world uh, and cutting down on the use of fossil fuels uh, and in cutting down on carbon gas emissions, I mean, that's what it's gonna take. I mean, not these, these small local programs, but we need to look at how is that cutting down on carbon gases? That is the essence of our fight against climate change. And so I'm very proud to be part of California's leadership in the fight against climate change. Thank you. Okay, the next question, we'll start with Al. Are there any propositions on this ballot that you feel strongly about? And if so, what is your position on them and why? All right, so I'm gonna jump right in and, uh, and uh, you know, urge people to vote no on Proposition 6. Proposition 6 is the road repair and, and bridge repair fund. You know, and there's a reason why the California Highway Patrol and civil engineers, you know, are opposing this irresponsible measure because, you know, the bottom line is we need to pay for our infrastructure. You know, there's a reason why the Palos Verdes Chamber of Commerce, the Torrance Chamber of Commerce, the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce, they all supported the gas tax for this road repair and, and bridge repair and public transit fund. It's because we need to invest in infrastructure. You know, there was a time President Reagan in increased the federal gas tax. Uh, you know, there was a time when Republicans knew that we had to pay to invest in infrastructure like maintaining our roads and bridges and investing in public transit. You know, I was very proud that I was able to deliver over $230 million to extend the Metro Green Line to the South Bay. You know, that the South Bay is a big hole now in terms of public transportation. How are we gonna cut down on traffic with the ever-growing population unless we start investing in public transportation? And so those funds, you know, the, the funds needed to retrofit our freeways and our bridges so that we're prepared for the, for the, 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 the big earthquake, you know, it's, it's a question of, you know, uh, not, not a question of if, but of when. You know, we need to invest in, in infrastructure uh, to support you. our economy and for public safety. Thank you. Frank, same question. Thank you for that question. Uh, everybody knows Prop 6 is SB1, of course, and that is the biggest scam that's being perpetrated on all of you because of the fact that we, Reagan did start the gas tax and he wanted all that money to be put into the roads. Today, our legislators take 70% of that gas tax and use it for other things. California already is the highest in the nation on, on tax. Today, you can drive across the border going into Nevada and pay a, a, at least a dollar a gallon less for gasoline. But you know what? We have the worst roads in the United States, by far the worst roads, five times worse than any other place in the United States. And so we're paying more than anywhere else and we're getting a bad product. And <laughs> Prop 6, is much worse than you think. It's just not the gas tax. It's diesel and it's registration on your car. So each one of you are gonna be paying a minimum $800 a year more per car that you own going forward. But you know the biggest scam is? Prop 6 is explaining to you that it's a road diet bill. It's not to fix or widen streets or make them bigger or better. Read the, very, the first paragraph of the bill. It's a road diet. So to spend that money, they have to take a lane of traffic away on Hawthorne Boulevard here and put a bike lane in. So you'll be coming up the hill in one lane of traffic. And that's what they're doing, a lot of these cities, to get that money. So, you know, the fact that we want to pretend that we need more money, we have a surplus in the state today, but they want more of your money, but then they spend 70% of the gas tax they already get on other things, that's where we're at. Thank you. Okay, Frank, we're gonna start with you on this one. How would you make healthcare available and more affordable for everybody in California? You know, unfortunately, I think that most of you don't realize that very soon, and this election may be about this one singular thing, that if I don't get elected and they keep the supermajority in the legislation, single-payer health care is going to happen. Now, single-payer health care for all of you means that, means that uh, your Medicaid and Medi-Cal go away. 
that goes into the single payer health care. So all seniors would be a part of that system, like it or not. But in addition to that, anyone who receives a paycheck in the state of California to pay for this single payer health care is going to take 15% of your paycheck before taxes. So for the average person, this is going to be very difficult for you to survive with single payer health care. Now, Unfortunately, there is people that need help to get health care. There's no doubt about that. But the competitive world that we live in in the United States is much better than the state or the government doing any of these things. They have proven that when government gets involved in anything like this, it's failed and it costs us a lot of money. Single payer health care alone is going to be one of the things that we will be talking about in the years to come, how devastating it's been to California. Thank you. Thank you. Al. You know, the first step in addressing the, the crisis of uh, affordable health care and the ever escalating, escalating costs of health care is to know the facts and not believe in the fear mongering fake news. You know, uh, our country, uh, we are the only advanced industrialized country in the world that doesn't uh, have a stronger. Uh, government uh, role in providing affordable health care. I mean, we are paying so much more per patient, per uh, person, and getting so much less uh, in uh, medical services than any other country in the world. In order to make, uh, to bring health care costs under control, we need to support the Affordable Care Act. I mean, that was a, a, a you know, a significant uh, progress that was made to 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 not discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions, you know, to uh, uh, to to ensure that that uh, that we are all invested in uh, public health rather than uh, you know just allowing insurance companies to uh, to pull off uh, people who you know who have health issues and, and and you know who are too costly and that would cut into the insurance company's profits. I mean we need to support the Affordable Care Act. Here in California, uh, I was very proud to, to support a new law that provides for increased transparency for prescription drugs. I mean, we need to uh, crack down on the, on, on, on the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies to make sure that they're not making profits off of patients' backs. Thank you. All right, now we'll start with you on this question. Are you in favor of stricter gun controls? Yes. 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 Uh, I am. <laughs> Quick answer. I, I, I am strongly in support of common sense gun safety laws. You know, uh, we, we, our country has seen, you know, tragedy after tragedy of people who shouldn't have access to guns having access to guns. And there are too many guns. Uh, you know, that are, that are threatening the lives of our, 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 our students, our children, our families, our neighborhoods. You know, I'm proud that uh, this year I co-authored a bill to uh, uh, allow school employees to petition the court for what are called gun violence restraining orders, to, to seek court orders to take guns away from people with mental illness, to take pe guns away from people with a history of domestic violence. I mean, these are some of many examples of how uh, we, we need to crack down, uh, and, and, and you know, you need, we need people who, are, uh, who have the courage to stand up to the National Rifle Association. You know, I'm proud that, uh, that, that I have an F grade from the National Rifle Association, because I think that's what it's going to take to fight for safer neighborhoods and safer communities and safer schools, is to fight for common sense gun safety laws. Thank you. Frank. Thank you. It's one of those few things we, we almost agree on everything. And I do agree that too many people that shouldn't have guns do have guns. People that will have a past of mental illness or any of those kinds of things should not have a gun, period. And we have to do so much more in that field to make sure that people that have had problems in their lives uh, either are monitored or their guns are taken away or whatever it takes. But those are one, that's just one of those things that, that is a common sense type thing that people that, that most of us would agree shouldn't have a gun. Now, having said that, I don't think we're going to the point where we, we need to go to your homes and take your guns away from you. That's not what I'm saying, though. I'm talking about people who had previous mental health problems. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Frank, we're going to start with you on this next question. 
Are you willing to stand up against the federal, federal administration to maintain the environmental protections we have here in California? Well, I, I, I believe that uh, California is doing the right things for almost everything we do environmentally. I've supported all those things. But here's the thing. We want to pretend in California we're doing all these right things, the rhetoric. Let's talk about cap and trade. Ten years ago, cap and trade was passed, and they just renewed it. And by renewing it, believe it or not, they took all the money out of cap and trade that was going to the environment, every penny that was being raised by cap and trade, six to seven or eight billion dollars a year. They're taking the money now, and they're putting it into the train. And so we want to pretend like they want to do all these great environmental things, but they're taking that money now and putting it into a train to nowhere. Now, 10 years, for 10 years, that money has done a tremendous amount of things for the state of California environmentally, and I so wholly support that. I think that is very good. But now going forward for the next 10 years, that money is going to be put on that trade. But in addition to that, they're putting 72 cents a gallon on cap and trade that you're going to be paying at the pumps to put more money into that train. So we can talk about all the things California wants to do about environment, but the reality is it's not what you think. And so, yes, I would support a lot of issues with, with the environment in the state of California, and we, I don't believe that we need to fight the federal government. We need to convince the federal government that one of the, some of the things that we're doing here are good. Thank you. Thank you. Al, same question. We need to fight the Trump administration and their work, their, their determination to roll back California's strong environmental laws to protect our clean air and our water. One after another, the Trump administration has been targeting California, trying to roll back the progress that we have made with the Clean Air Act, rolling back our prog prog progress with the Clean Water Act. You know, these are fundamental uh, protections that we rely on, our children, our families rely on to be able to breathe clean air and to drink clean water. You know, I am proud, again, that, that I stood up to the Trump administration to block their plan to expand offshore oil drilling. That's the kind of leadership that California needs to provide because, you know, the Trump administration is not a friend of the environment. And so, uh, you know, California is leading the way. California is growing the economy while leading the national and global fight against climate change. We're doing that by by you know, passing bills like SP 100, a bill that I co-authored to establish the, the, the goal and the aspiration of California being the world's fifth largest economy, aspiring and achieving 100% renewable energy by 2045. I mean, that's the kind of leadership that we need to seriously uh, fight against this global uh, existential threat, that is climate change. Thank you. All right, Al, we'll start with you on this question. What is your plan for prison reform? As a former prosecutor, I have opposed uh, AB 109. Uh, AB 109 is uh, uh, what my uh, uh, what Mr. Scott refers to as prison realignment. Uh, it was a, a measure that uh, that uh, was a, in response to a federal court order to dramatically reduce the state prison population. You know, the, the impact of that, uh, along with uh, a series of propositions uh, that are followed, which I, again, as a former prosecutor, I opposed, Proposition 47, Proposition 57, uh, th th those measures are leading to an uptick in uh, and property crimes. But let me, uh, again, remind people that uh, to focus on the facts and, and not, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, believe in all the fear-mongering fake news out there. I mean, we, we heard that violent crime has dramatically increased. You know, I just Googled South Bay crime rates, uh, and you can pull out your phone and Google South Bay crime rates, and this is the, the first thing that popped up. The Daily Breeze, March 2018, violent crime drops in the South Bay. You know, so, uh, so while I, I, I support, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to see our, our state dollars going uh, to, to more productive uh, ends like, like our schools and our universities, but at the same time, I'm not willing to do that 
uh, at, at, you know, to the to the sacrifice and detriment of public safety. But let's Thank focus you. on the facts and make responsible decisions. Thank you, Frank. Thank prison you. reform. This is a true example of how we can manipulate anything we want to talk about up here, and I'm sorry that that happens. But this is why I'm, I am supported by the Torrance Police Officers Association. They'll be out walking precincts tomorrow because, again, I was the only one up here opposing AB 109, Prop 47, and 57. Now let's just talk about those things. Violent crimes. We want to manipulate numbers. Violent crimes only got up 15 percent between 2014 and 2016. Google it. But that's true number. But remember, Prop 47 and 57 took 150 violent crimes and moved them down to misdemeanors. If you move them back to where they were before that, violent crime was up 42 percent. So yeah, we can we can talk about numbers. We can pretend that all this stuff is not happening. But let me tell you, if you're the victim of one crime, that one crime is one crime too many. So we need to do a lot more to help our police departments do what they need to do to protect us. Because, you know, I think that basically most of us would be very willing to pay more taxes if we feel safe. So being here right now this very second and all this rhetoric we're saying up here, but if you went home right now and your home was robbed, let me tell you, it would sink in that everything we're talking about up here is very important to you. These are, this is an issue that, that crime in California has gotten out of control. People are coming from other states to commit crimes here. And I can give you those newspaper articles too, by the way, because they come here because they know if they get arrested in California, they're out that same day. There's no punishment. So we have done some crazy things here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Frank, we're gonna start with you on this question. What is your position on fracking here in California? Well, actually, uh, I, I know most of you know that I used to work for Chevron, 1966 to 74, and uh, I own service stations, so I have full disclosure. So when it comes to the world of oil, I think I'm not an expert, but know a lot more than most people would. And I've studied fracking very closely. Now, fracking is a process by which can be very dangerous to our drinking water. Most of you realize that I've been an advocate for clean drinking water in the South Bay. I sat on the board, the sanitation district. I, in the city of Torrance, we do water injection. We're the only city that does that. And we have our own desalination plant that we take salt water, purify it, and inject it into the soil to block the seawater inversion into that. So the city of Torrance is totally invested in helping the drinking water. Now the problem with our drinking water here is the fact that the inland part of, the, of Southern California takes too much water out. So the, the inversion of salt water is a problem. And it's a big problem, by the way. And so I'm not sure we're gonna be able to fix that problem until we get the inland cities to agree to stop taking so much water out. Now this is an example of where we can take some of the money from that train and fix our water problems. Thank you. Thank you. Al, same question. I oppose fracking. Uh, fracking is a dangerous practice of injecting high volumes of water combined with toxic chemicals to break through shale in order to access underground oil supplies. Uh, there, there, there is a, a, an abundance of evidence showing that it, it threatens our groundwater, our drinking water supply, and it also uh, you know, has potential uh, impacts on seismic activity, on earthquakes. We don't need any more earthquakes in, in, in California. So, you know, but, but I, I would say that, uh, um, it, it, yeah. you know, what you, you, you can't uh, talk about uh, uh, taking money for, for a high-speed rail and, uh, and, 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 you know, spending on anything else because, you know, I supported, uh, the lockbox provision in uh, Proposition 69, the last uh, uh, you know, election, to, to make sure that we cannot be spending transportation dollars on anything else. And so, you know, when you hear people talking about, uh, you know, how we can take money from the from the bullet train and spend it on water or spend it on air, you know, I mean, that is exactly what what people are are, are objecting to. They don't. They want their taxpayer dollars to be spent on what they're told it's supposed to be spent on. And so, you know, that is what I support. I, I support uh, uh, making sure that transportation dollars get spent on transportation uh, and not on anything else. Thank you. All right, Al, we'll start with you on this question. What is your plan to improve funding for public education? 
so this has been a, a cause that's been near and dear to my heart uh, for many years, not only as a parent, but as a former school board member and now as the South Bay Assembly member. Uh, this past year, I uh, led the fight in the state legislature to fight for increased funding for our K through 12 schools uh, with my bill, Assembly Bill 2808. 2808 uh, was a bill that was supported by a broad coalition of of, uh, uh, of groups, including the California State PTA. It was endorsed, formally endorsed by the Palos Verdes uh, School District, as well as all other South Bay school districts. Uh, and uh, this is uh, you know, part of my ongoing effort to, to make sure that we get our fair share of funding from Sacramento so that you know, w w school funding, I wanna make sure people understand, I mean, that, that directly translates into smaller class sizes for our kids. It translates it into uh, art and music programs for our kids. It, it, it translates into more school counselors. You know, uh, I, I know that uh, uh, teenage mental health is, is uh, a growing issue here in the Palos Verdes community. And so we want to be able to provide the academic and the student support services, and, and that is why uh, more school funding, investing in our kids is so critically important. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Um, my daughter's a teacher, my daughter-in-law is a teacher, my sister-in-law is a teacher, so I am heavily involved with schools. I've worked hand in hand with our Torrance School District. But having said that, I'm gonna tell you a very selfish thing now. You know, Palos Verdes, Torrance, and Manhattan Beach are the lowest funded school districts in the state of California, and we need to address that. Now the problem is we don't have a legislator that'll stand up for us. Now I know we represent the state of California, but I represent you first. And we need to stand up and tell the rest of the state of California we need our fair share for our students. Now we are so fortunate that we have great teachers in our school districts. We have great administrators that take care of us. You realize that those three districts I just told you graduate 98 plus, 98 plus students in high school every single year. You go across Western and the LA Unified graduates 47%. So obviously, more money to those districts don't necessarily educate kids. And you do realize that fourth grade scores statewide, fourth grade scores statewide, now think about this, fourth grade scores are 45th in the nation, 45th in the nation. But again, selfishly, I want our district to be taken care of first or get even pairing with the rest of the state of California because it's not fair for our students to do with less and our teachers to do with less. And believe it or not, we do a lot less. And that's why I helped pass bond measures in Torrance twice and we raised over $500 million in the city of Torrance. I was the chair. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have time for one more question. So we're starting with Frank here. What measure or measures should be taken to ensure that all sections of the state have adequate water? Again, this is one of the things we've ignored in the state of California. Now, we are very fortunate in the South Bay and cities like Torrance and so forth because we do get our, our water here. But if you were in the Central Valley or any of those kinds of places in the state of California, which does affect you, by the way, because farmers there are only getting 25% of the water they need to grow what they need. So in the future, we wanna talk about populations and pollution and so forth, but if our farms aren't able to produce the food that we need, we're in trouble. So the state of California has ignored this problem. We, you will hear in just a few seconds how we've done so many things, not really true, but we need to do so much more if whatever we've done, we need to triple it at least for the state of California. Again, being selfish, we need the water here in California. Now, there's so many ways to take care of this problem. We have a natural way to get water to California and that's the Colorado River. We should be looking at building the ability to put water into Lake Powell that comes to us, by the way, but we haven't done that. So we take water from the Colorado River and the, and the Delta but as you know, we've been cut off from the Delta, and so we have just enough water to survive. And so that's another problem with housing, by the way, because building more homes is gonna take more water, and that's gonna limit the housing. So we can translate that to homeless, or you can translate it to building more homes any way you want to, but we need water. Water is paramount for us for our future. Thank you. Al, same question. The fact is that in 2014, we passed a $7, $7 billion bond fund 
uh, a, a bond measure to uh, build up our water infrastructure. That is what the state uh, has done, and, and that is what continues to be needed to, uh, to, to invest in our water infrastructure so that we can achieve uh, water independence. We need to balance, we, we, we need to balance uh, sustainable water practices with uh, investing in sustainable water infrastructure. You know, so much of our rainwater, so much of the, the w wonderful rain that we're getting today uh, is just running out into the ocean. We need to invest in uh, groundwater infrastructure so, so that we can capture that water, uh, recharge the, uh, the, the, the groundwater, uh, the, the underwater uh, tables, uh, that not only serve as a, water, a critical local water supply, but we can uh, recycle that water uh, and make it into potable water, into drinkable water. So uh, it, it's, it's a combination of, of uh, you know, adopting water conservation practices with investing in uh, sustainable uh, water infrastructure like groundwater recharge so that uh, uh, we can live uh, responsibly uh, without harming our environment. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go to closing statements. You have two minutes each, and we're starting with Frank. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here today. I really appreciate what this bad boy is. But I want you to realize this election is critically important to you. There's so many issues that this election will have an effect on. And we can be talking about the homeless that we need to correct. We can talk about 100% renewable in California. All these things are critically important. But keep in mind, what's happened is last year, if I was here a year ago to tell you what was gonna happen in the future, you'd kind of laugh at me, but it's already happened. Gas tax, Prop 13, all these things are, are things that are gonna cost you dearly. Now you gotta believe that if Prop 13 is taken away, I think that most of you are gonna have a very difficult time keeping the homes you have today, okay? Public safety, this is why I'm endorsed by the Torrance Police Officers Association. They see how hard I work against AB 109, Prop 4757. <laughs> That's why they're walking precincts, okay? Because they see it firsthand. These are the kinds of things that are important to you. Again, I told you before that paying more taxes you probably would accept, but public safety is something you won't accept. So we need to keep our city safe, our community safe. You don't be, want to be that one singular person that's a victim of a crime. Our schools need help, seriously. Worst in the nation, our streets. We can keep on talking about all this stuff. And again, the state of California has a surplus today, but they want more of your money. And so we need people up there will will learn to spend the money they do have, and we have to limit the money they have. So one of the things I haven't touched on, we didn't touch on here, one of the real serious things that we're gonna have to worry about here in Palos Verdes is local control. Very soon, your local councilmen and mayors are not gonna be able to control density in your, your, your streets here. They're gonna be building homes because they've already passed bills that they can build high density on transit corridors. That's the Pawthorne Boulevard, and PB Drive West, and all those streets. So we have to get back control to our council. These people that are on our council, we elected them to represent us. I'm just asking you for your vote. It's a common sense vote. You just look at the issues, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, this concludes oh. our, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I apologize, Oops. Oops. Al, really. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. No offense taken. He gets to go next. Right. That's right. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for the League of Women Voters for giving me this opportunity to, uh, and both of us this opportunity to uh, participate in this forum. And thank you all again for, for coming out today. Uh, I am running for re-election because I want to keep fighting for the South Bay. You know, again, I, I ask that you, uh, uh, you know, there, there's too much fake news uh, out there in, in this day and age. I ask you to do your, ho your own homework and, and uh, determine the facts. You know, one thing I've repeated over and over again, I support Proposition 13. Okay, let me say that again. I support Proposition 13. I support Proposition 13 because it protects homeowners. As a homeowner, I don't want to pay more property taxes. And so I support Proposition 13. Number two, every single law enforcement group in the state of California, except for the Torrance Police Officers Association for some reason, you know, is, is, has endorsed me. The California police chiefs, law enforcement officers, your local sheriff's deputies, 
the California District Attorneys Association have all endorsed me. Why? Because I am a former prosecutor, I have a 100% public safety voting record, and I was uh, awarded the Legislator of the Year by the California Police Chiefs Association. I'm proud of my record in fighting for and delivering for the South Bay. I've written laws to, to support the creation of local uh, uh, jobs, and I've written laws to help small businesses. That's why I'm endorsed by the California Small Business Association. I'm going to keep fighting for more funding for our schools because my daughter is one of is in one of our local public schools, and I'm going to make sure that she has a quality education. I'm also proud that I've been standing up to the Trump administration to protect our environment, to protect our coast, to protect our clean air and our water. And that's why I'm endorsed by the Sierra Club and the California League of Conservation Voters. And I am also proud to be uh, to have been honored by AMVETS as their California Legislative of the Year in 2014 for my strong record in fighting for disabled and homeless veterans. As your South Bay Assembly member, I have also been fighting hard for women's rights and the Me Too movement and for common sense gun safety laws, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, I apologize for cutting you off. That's terrible. <laughs> This concludes our candidates forum for the 66th Assembly District. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of Palos Verdes Peninsula and the Palos Verdes branch of the American Association of University Women, I want to thank both of our candidates for so graciously joining us today. And I want to thank the audience for all of your excellent questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of the questions and answers. Um, we're going to have the State Senate uh, Candidates Forum immediately following this one, so stick around, please. Thank you.